Hey, I'm Brandis, and I'm going to tell you about loom knitting. First, I'm going to show you the looms that we have and the ones that we're going to use. These are just the standard circle looms. We have an, our, our adult extra large, and then we have our adult, toddler, and newborn infant. This size is, size is for flowers and it works really well for premature babies. Now when you make them on the looms, they do come, they do tend to get snugger, especially when you make them with the tension a little bit tighter, but they also come out smaller. It does look like it's very, very large, but it's gonna be snugger. This works really well for my husband's head. That's about how I gauge it, is if it's gonna fit my husband. My, it'll go about this size. The other supplies that you're gonna need, which come with your kit if you get just the four standard four loom set, it'll come with a hook and a yarn needle. You're gonna need scissors. And sometimes if your hands have if your hands are sore, mine get sore, especially when I've been knitting for a while, you can use a hard straw. It'll help you get around the pegs faster. And of course, yarn. Bulkier yarn is my favorite to use. It tends to work up faster. It's pretty. And you can, of course, use baby yarn. They make looms that are work better for the thinner yarns, which makes the pegs go closer together. And they also have yarn that works for the bulkier yarn and the pegs are further apart. The number of pegs actually affects how large the hats, blankets, scarves, stuffed animals, how large everything can turn out. So on the label of the yarn, it has super bulky number six. It'll also have number five for bulky It'll go down to number four for worsted weight, three for sport, and two, I believe, is three is for baby and sport, two is lightweight, and then one is very thin crochet. It also will tell you what size hook that they recommend for your yarn and or knitting needle. It'll also give you your instructions for how to wash, if you can iron or anything like that. Some people are allergic to wool, so you'll want to look to see if there's any wool in your yarn. And if you're lucky, they give you instructions, and some brands even put measuring tape on the outside so you can measure how long your string needs, your yarn needs to be for any projects. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, to get started, there's a big debate. I have this, <laughs> this huge debate with my mother-in-law. I like to ball my yarn from the beginning. And you pull the yarn from the center. If you're looking at it, so you have your label here. You pull it from the center of the yarn facing you. On the right-hand side, you'll find the end on the inside. Wait, there it is. That it's actually pulling it from here. Oh. That is. We call That's this. That's it, right there. That's the top, which is what you don't want because this will cause it to have. That is it. So, somewhere, maybe. <laughs> this is the outside of the skein. Some people work from the outside of the skein, and what tends to happen is you'll get a big knot. I like to untie knots. Not a lot of people like to untie knots. So, no. I tend to ball mine from the beginning. Not a lot of people do. 
No, I spent six hours trying to untie some knots one night. <laughs> I was miserable. <laughs> I spent all, like two days untying a huge ribbon knot. So I will ball mine from the beginning. And it's super easy to ball, ball yarn. Or you can go ahead and um, use a winder if you are lucky enough to have that. Um, my mom will put my dad to use in balling yarn. It's It can be very... Uh, relaxing if you get good at it. You don't even realize it. So you just wrapped it around your fingers. I'm gonna let it go. <laughs> My dogs will chase the balls when they go running around. Um, they do make what they call yarn bowls. So your yarn doesn't go running all over the floor. You don't have to necessarily get a yarn bowl you can use a fruit bowl, that's what I have, <laughs> or a cake plate. And you'll end up with a giant knot if you're not careful. Yeah. <laughs> the bulkier the yarn is, the easier it is to untie though. As long as you don't pull it tight. And if it's not fancy. And if it's not fancy, you want to make sure. The fancier, like, mohair, that's really hard to untie. Because it is, like, hair. Wool is hard to do. We do have some ladies and gentlemen that are part of, like, the Fiber Guild. And they work with sheep's hair. Sheep's. Is it hair? Sheep's wool before it's processed. And they'll dye, they'll dye it, and you can actually buy it, and they'll spin the yarn, they actually spin it here um, in Savannah. Tara has figured out a really cool way to have it. So she has a center pulled yarn, a center pulled ball, ball. I have a winder, so I get a cake, so it comes out like a um, flat circle, like a cylinder. Oh. If it's not rolled in a ball. Hmm. Kind of like how they have um, some of them at the store. But for me, I go ahead and roll mine in a ball so that I'm not getting a giant knot. It doesn't take very long. As long as it's not a huge skein. And you can divide up the skeins. And usually, with a regular size hat, an adult hat, you can get, use a whole, if you use Hometown USA, which is this brand from Lions Brand, and you use a five ounce um, skein, you can get a whole hat out of it, and possibly even a uh, pom pom, depending on the tension that you use. The tension can affect how the pegs, if the pegs come loose, or how hard it is for you to get it up over the pegs. Everybody says they don't have time to learn how to knit, but once you learn how to do this, you can almost do it mindlessly. It's like working a wagon wheel. You don't even realize that you're doing it. I mean, I've, I'll do it and watch TV. I've sat at a table and done it. Mm -hmm. I've done it in a waiting room in a doctor's office and made three hats. Yes, I did wait way too long for the doctor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and now I'm the ball. So, to get started, I don't necessarily follow all of the uh, proper instructions because I've been doing this for a very long time. So, what the instructions on the loom tells you to do is to loop around the starter peg. I'm going to use this flower loom because I'm going to work this hat up very quickly. So you would wrap it around the starter peg and use your thumb to hold it and then wrap it here from behind and around. So it looks like a little purse at E if you're looking at it. And that is your first cast on stitch. Instructional purposes, 
you would continue wrapping from behind back to the front of the loop, the peg, all the way around. So you get back around to your starter peg, and now you've created a whole row. And you can go all the way back. Do the same thing all the way around the second time. What I do when I'm working it is I have my hand inside and I pull the yarn as I go. Some people, they will set it down and pull this apart. They will take their yarn and they'll start, this peg right here is a really good holder. So if you need to put your work down, you just wrap it around, so just like this, except you wrap it around and your work is saved. So when you're just starting out, before you do your second row, you can push the first row down until you're confident enough to use your fingers. Then you pick up your working yarn and wrap again. So you can look inside and you can see there's just the two, two rows on here. That's when you take the hook, you want to make sure you grab all of the yarn from the first row and pull it up and over. If this comes loose from when you pull it over, it's okay. You can pull it tighter and it's not going to pull it loose. So pull the first loop up and over that second row. And see how it was tight and you have to work it? You can still pull it because there's there's a little give because you want to pull it too tight that you can't pull it up and can't pull it over because it can pull your pegs out making you miss a stitch and or in some cases break your yarn which means you have to frog your um, project and they call it frogging because it sounds like rivet when you rip it apart that's not my joke. <laughs> so you would continue just pulling this first row up and over the second. Now different companies make this little divot in their pegs a little bit different and how they, and how they have the, um, top of their pegs. Some of them they'll have a little catch so they can make sure that this yarn doesn't come off. But the general idea is that they'll have a little divot so your hook can go and grab that first yarn. And you have just knitted your first row all the way around. Again, you can pull all of them down all at once, or push them back up really quick. You pick up your working yarn, you can pull it down as you go, just using your fingers that you're hold, using to hold the loom. So you're about a peg or two ahead. And see, it it works like a wagon wheel. So you're more, instead of holding it flat, you end up holding it sideways.
So I'm gonna pull it apart, pull it off so I can show you how the tension is important. So if you have it too tight, I'm gonna pull it real tight. place your hook in the same spot because if you're anything like me it will disappear in the side of the couch off the side on the floor in your clothes anywhere I'm spend a lot of time trying to find my hook I can't get my hook up and under this so when I would go when I try to go to move this I'm not going to be able to do another row. So you want to try to keep your tension the same because it'll make the hat look different. Now if you do it too loose and it's super easy to just pull this off. If you do it too loose it's, you have the same problem. You're, you'll end up with a really saggy spot in your, your project. That or you run the risk of the loop just falling off and you have to come back and you have to try to find it. And or you'll end up with a hole in your project. That's where this drop can come in handy. So we're going to start with a cuff. So to do a cuff, you'll pull the bottom up to the starting point. You'll take that first loop. It's easiest to start where you have that tie from your original slip knot. And you want to try to line up. Feel the ridge. You want to try to line it up with the peg. To try to keep it a straight line. And you'll be able to tell when it's wonky. Because you'll have a diagonal lean. And, so, and in some cases, some patterns will call for the lean. Most cases, they don't. And this is the perfect time if you do choose to change colors, you can add another color, which would be for, um, and we can do a more advanced video on that. But this is also a great time to hide your tail. You just tuck it right in and you don't have to, to worry about it. So you'll be just flipping these loops over the top. And it is the loops that we're flipping are these very bottom loops. So we're making a cut. So it ends up making the cut half the size of whatever, however many rows you put on the hat so far. Typically the length of a hat is half of the rows you do. So if you do 20 rows it'll be 10 for the cuff and then you'll do another 10 for the height of the hat and that will be about a standard height of the hat. you'll end up with 20 rows for a hat. A neat trick I've learned for this particular yarn is that there are four pieces to it. So if you realize, hey, there's only three, then you know you're missing one single strand. So you can feel that this is a straight, straight row. I'll make it wonky 
so you can see what it looks like. Loosen these up. And these will be wonky really quick. And that's what it'll look like because it's wonky. It's just one row off. And it kind of leans this way. So you want to make sure you're getting the right loops. Just to make it straight. If you drop a loop, it'll create a hole and you don't want to do that. And then you just take your hook. over those loops. I can tell Tara's working this one. Her tension's a bit tighter than mine. They make all kinds of different hooks, more ergonomic. This one is a more ergonomic kind. They have the, you said the purple ones. These you are usually, see? The tension is too tight. It can pop your, your, your pegs out. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good example. Don't glue them in. Because some projects will have you skip the pegs or pull the pegs out. So you don't want to pull your glue your pegs in. Um, you can also, if you lose a peg or break a peg, a lot of times you can get kits that they have extra pegs. So you don't want to glue your pegs in. Get that by accident. Don't want to do that. Um, if you need to replace a peg, I recommend not using a screw. Sometimes they, they do lift and you can push the pegs down as you go. But don't, don't use a screw. It pulls on the yarn. <laughs> I told you I did it tighter. Yeah. <laughs> Good practice. No wonder my hands hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Our cuff. So then you would just pick up your working yarn and keep going. Now this these loops are again going to be a little bit more snug because they did come from the bottom. And they're being suffocated by terrace loops. Again, you just do that simple E wrap right there. That's what it's called. They call it is an E wrap. Try to take a hook. hidden inside of the cup. So we have a cup and our starter tail hidden in place. And 
here's the cup. So if you had it on a hat, that's what the cup would look like. It gives to me it gives it a more finished look for the hat to have a cup. So now to cast off, that's what it's called when you take it off of the pegs. This is the easiest way I have found to do it. Um, let's get this one. I usually end up having a little piece of yarn somewhere close by. Not everybody does, but I, I tend to. Um, and most of my hats end up having a uh, Pom -pom. Mm. I need a long piece of yarn, but long enough to get all the way around your hat. So you can cut it off, cut it off from your skin. What I do is I start on the opposite side of the starter peg. And I'll take this right this piece of yarn and I will pull it under the, the loop to take it off. So now it's on the yarn and off of the peg. And just work and weave this yarn weave it onto the yarn and off the tag that's casting it off it gets easier as you go around Tension is not as tight. You can leave that um, working yarn right there just to hold it in place. Sometimes if it's too tight, it can have a crochet hook nearby. You can use a crochet hook because you need a second tool. You can use the hook to pull it through because you might have to use your other hook to pull it off the peg if, say, Tara has helped you put it on the <laughs> pegs again. <laughs> or, or you have it with the three loops and it's really tight because you're doing the, the ridges. This is not how the instructions tell you to do it, but I have found that this is easier and to me it, it is more secure because you're actually creating a you have a third um, tie. So now you can pull it off. This is my favorite part. You can pinch it like a bag. Pinch it closed, and you can pull it with the other string, the other yarn. And now you have. Tie it with a knot closed. Square knot. 
and since now you have three, you can, what I do is I tie it across with each one. And then I'll tie it with this one as well. And this is another reason that it's good to have a crochet hook is that you can use your hook to pull the yarn through to underneath. Try to keep it evenly spaced. So you can give, if say you're putting a hat, a pom-pom on it, you're going to need to make sure that the hat has a little bit more security. You can create a little bit more stability for your pom-pom. Because a pom-pom like this, you need to make sure that it has a place for it to be secure. I want to make sure that there's a good solid space for it. So turning it inside out, now you have just like what it looks like out on top. And you can tie the same knot. Or if you're having a pom-pom, you can take the two extra pieces from the pom-pom and pull those through and then tie them together here. But we would do a pom-pom class for anybody that was doing the advance. Or what that was interested. Tie this off real quick. I just found that this was a whole lot easier than trying to work with the working yarn and risking it coming undone. like the instructions, right? And since you have so many secure pieces. And this is our tail from the beginning. Tie small, weave that in, tie a small knot. Anybody that you know, crochets or knits regularly knows how much fun it is to weave in the ends. That's why I like to do crafts because this is one less knot I have to tie. One less end. And voila, a teeny tiny little hat with a, a cinch at the top. I am trying to thread this straw to give you an example of how to use this. Um, it's really helpful with what we call the infinity loom, which is S-shaped. Um, you can use the infinity loom to make um, long panels. It has, I would say, 122 pegs, if not more. Um, I have made one full blanket off of it, and it was a, about a full size blanket. It took a long time to complete. So, um, another reason you want to keep the label to your yarn so you can give, if you're giving the blanket away or the 
the item away that you're making, you can give the person the label so that they know how to care for the um, item so that they don't say iron it and melt the 100% acrylic that you gave them. Because that's the last thing you want to have and you've made them this beautiful blanket or hat or scarf and they go and they iron it or put it in a super hot washer or dryer and it melts. And it would break my heart if I spent years <laughs> making a giant afghan and it got melted. And that's just a plastic reusable straw. Yes. I, um, ha! I threaded it. So then you can use this to loop around and make it easier. So I'm going to start over on this, this infant loom so I can show you how to use the straw. I'm going to tie a slip knot. The easiest way to tie a slip knot Put my working yarn here and the tail, cross it over so it looks like almost a figure eight. Pull that through. Sorry. Loop it over and pull it through. So that when you pull the working yarn, it pulls it tight. And you can go ahead and pull it a little snug. What I do is I go ahead and skip this peg and put it on my very first peg. I'll put the working, the tail, this direction. Because if I pull it tight, it's going to go this way which is the direction that we're going to be working. So I'm going to wrap this around and use my straw. Use it like a pen. You can still use your fingers to guide it around, but your fingers aren't having to go in between the pegs. Which for some people, you know, that can be painful. This, this, this is what it would be like if you were having to use your hands, which you can get cramps right here. And you can cut this straw smaller, whatever is, is easier for you to use. So now I've made it all the way around and I'm going to work my second row. steady on your leg and turn it just like a wheel. So now I have, I've come to my slip knot, 
See how it's a little snug, but I can still work it up and over. There you go. Go all the way around. An infant hat can, depending on the size yarn you use, can work up in about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on, you know, if not faster. The more comfortable you get, the faster it can work up. Um, you can make panels to make a blanket, you can make scarves. There's, there's so many possibilities. We have, we got a, some books, pattern books, to make uh, stuffed animals. We have uh, pom poms. I love a pom pom on a hat. We'll show you. I'm going to teach you guys how to do an invisible knot. So if you have to say join and or add yarn to your project and or you ran out of yarn for your hat or you want to just add a different color. Um, and keep in mind, you don't necessarily have to add it. Um, you don't have to add it at the starter peg. You can add it anywhere in the hat. It doesn't have to be right at the starter peg. A lot of people try to just change colors right at the starter peg. It doesn't necessarily have to do that because sometimes it'll make it look like a swirly ice cream cone. Sometimes it won't. Um, but to do a um, invisible knot, do you, if you remember when we used to have those friendship slider bracelets, it's a lot like that. So we can do it with the bright yarn. Um, so you'll tie, like you're tying your shoes, a little knot right there, just like that. And a little, just like that. So that's what it looks like once you have them. So you'll pull this one tight, and you'll pull this one tight. And as you pull it together, they slide together, and you can pull each of the ends tight, and you pull the working ends tight. That is an invisible join. They can't, they won't come apart. So you can take your scissors and you can cut really close to that knot. And they won't come apart. This has saved me lots and lots and lots of, of heartache in projects. I don't like to weave in my ends. So you can save yourself time when changing colors like in this hat. You can hide it and you don't even you can't even really tell as to where it is unless you're looking for it. some hats that I had stashed away so I can give you guys some examples um, this is an adult size hat with no brim or no cuff so but it has a pom-pom and these are those tails uh, that didn't get trimmed off just so you can 
have an idea as to what it would look like once the pom-pom is tied on. So you can just trim that off and you have the pom-pom. And you would shape the pom-pom so it's, it's rounded. And the, one of the nice things about it, if it doesn't have a cuff, is you can roll it up to have a cuff to fit snugger if you needed it to. And it gives it a bit more of a stretch. You have a child size, so like a mommy and me, of this one. This is, you can use all different kinds of yarn. This is like a feathery yarn with a sparkle along with it. This is an adult hat without a cuff, but then a child size hat with a cuff. And if it is, if this child hat is too, too big, and it's that kind of in-between size child, that kind of a, like six, seven year old, you can roll the cuff up and this will fit. Because the newborn hats really only fit newborns and infants. And then it would work the same for an adult hat. So if you have like a, a child that's about 12, you would just take an adult hat and you can roll it up. This is one with a uh, cuff and this is a yarn that was doubled to make it a little bit thicker. Adult size hat with the cuff, and you can roll it up and now it will fit that tweenager. Little bitty infant with a cuff and a pom pom. Can you just imagine a newborn with a pom pom? It'd be so cute. And then this was my learning curve of this hat. Love the size pom pom, but I wanted to make the stripes even, and it would be a great slouchy hat because of the, the slouch here, but you don't want to wear it and run because the pom-pom is going to go everywhere. So you got to be kind of mindful of like what kind of function you're trying to give a person if you're giving the hat away. Um, so I had uh, one too many rows. Ideally, you want to, to make sure that you're making a functional hat if you're going to give it to somebody that's going to use it for something. If you go to If you go to the store and you're looking to buy looms, they do come in different types of packages. They do come in circle loom kits and they'll come with four in the package, but you can also get uh, packages and you'll see packages where they'll have uh, long looms, square looms that'll have four in them. They work the same way. Um, it's just based off of how many pegs and that'll affect how big your project will be. Um, you can use the square looms to make panels to say make a blanket and you can take those panels and sew them together or crochet them together. You could use plarn on this. Uh, we, in our group, we've been having a discussion about plarn and using it to make mats for the homeless here in Savannah. Um, you can use t-shirt yarn and make bath mats for your house, for your pets. Um, there's so many different things you can use the looms for. Um, they have oval looms, which will, and they have, this is the smaller of the two in the pack. Um, you can use these to make the cowl neck scarves. Um, since it's already made to be a little bit bigger, it's got a little bit, few more pegs than the regular circular looms. Because if you try to put the circular loom over your neck, yeah, it looks, it'll, some heads will fit through it. But, like I said before, that fits snugger and you'll just kind of more get like a neck warmer than a cowl neck. And then they have this one, you can make a tubular belt or a handle for a bag. If you were making a, a bag out of the loom, you could use this to make a bag, make it, um, Square, 
So you would go and instead of cinching it at the bottom, you could sew it closed and then you've got a sack and use this sort of loom to make the handle and they now have created a knitted bag and you could use the plarn and you've got a bag for the market. So you, now you've recycled and made yourself a bag to take to the farmer's market. So there's so many different uses you could um, use these, these looms for. And there's all different kinds of looms and hooks and everything. So if you have any questions, don't, you know, don't be afraid to reach out to us or send us a message, anything like that.